Hi everyone and welcome back to Stitchy Bee. I'm Cheryl Temple. Uh, I feel a little bit like a children's presenter this morning in my, my dungarees. Um, so good morning, hope you're okay. Um, I'm sorry I'm a bit late this week because I was burning the midnight oil yesterday on Wednesday finishing off my Tilly and the Buttons Miller dungarees. So um, this week is denim week as you probably guessed and um, to kick off let's talk about the pattern. A couple of weeks ago uh, Tilly and the Buttons launched their Miller dungarees pattern which is um, it looks quite a simple pattern um, slim dungaree leg and uh, with nice detail and buttons down the side so I'll show you mine so here it is um, I'm wearing it with my Tilly and the Buttons Agnes top um, I thought I may as well go head to toe Tilly seeing as we're doing the dungarees um, which I really love this pattern it's great and it's nice and long um, so as you know dungarees tend to come down quite far at the side so it helps to have a really long top or a bodysuit um, the Rowan bodysuit would be perfect underneath this if you're interested in a bodysuit pattern so here's mine I'll give you a whirl it's a little bit big on me so if you see at the sides which was kind of my worry last week wasn't it that some dungarees patterns gape a bit but just to be on the safe side I made the size 5 which I reckon to be a size 14 ish I think um, and I think I could probably do with sizing down because it the problem with dungarees are that you there's not much adjustment that can be made after you've made them I was going to make a twelve, but I thought let's just go for it and see how they turn out the back's great um, and the leg you can kind of see I made them extra long um, just to suit me but all the other adjustments um, were the same everything was kept the same as per the pattern so inside I also customized mine and the facing pieces I made in a nice contrast fabric it doesn't go with this top or my wallpaper for that matter. <laughs> I'm a bit clashy today, aren't I? Um, so yeah, and also I did a Hong Kong finish on that centre seam there, which the pattern calls for it to be overlocked, but you can finish it however you like. Um, and that looks quite nice and, and cool. And also I finished the waistband as well inside with the contrasting fabric. And it, if you wanted to go the whole hog, you could do the cuffs, on the bottom if you wanted but I just hemmed mine with a, a deep hem um, with matching top stitching thread um, which is all pink. Now with this pattern I bought the paper version I usually buy PDFs but with tailing the buttons the packaging so lovely and the booklet and instructions are so great um, I always want to buy the hard copy from Tilly. This is the third pattern I've made from them. I made the Bettine dress, I've made the Agnes tops, I made two of those, so this is my third. I've also bought the Coco but I've not had a chance to make that yet. So I love the instructions, all sewing patterns should come like this. Um, it's really clear, there's hardly any argument that you'll need to have with the instructions themselves. I do like a good row with instructions <laughs> sometimes but not these they're perfect and you do feel like it's really simplified it's not loads of boring text um, and each stage is clearly laid out so that's great now when you're sewing these um, I needed two meters of fabric to sew the size five which was great because it's not loads and loads of fabric and also you need to buy these dungaree clips which come I bought these from Tilly as well just because it was easy to have it in the same package and they come in a little pack like that and they also come with two buttons but um, I bought my own ones because I wanted them to match the side so the pattern calls for I think it's I think it's it's six or eight I'm not sure but I went for eight and put four down each side so that's what um, comes with the dungaree clip but I thought it's daft having different ones up here to the side so I made all mine match just because I wanted them to um, but they are 
you're supposed to buy 15 millimeter jeans buttons but I actually bought 20 because I can't find them now um, I did actually buy some and they were too small here we are so these were 14 millimeters and you can't really get an idea in the bag let me get one out the pattern calls for 15 mil which I bought these off eBay so look how small they are and I felt I wanted a bit more of a statement and the buttonhole would have been quite small um, for that so I think it's easier with a, a larger buttonhole um, so I went for the 20 mil jeans buttons having said that I actually think it adds bulk to the side so I've got quite big hips for my size so I don't really want to draw more attention here and I think it does but it's fine I think if I sewed it in a size down it would definitely help um, and another tip for these buttons are you could use flat ones so just a regular button from your button stash if you've got enough and I think that would help keep the profile slimmer because it really is like a kind of beacon on this area isn't it having such shiny um, I, I chose silver buttons just because I wear silver jewellery um, but yeah it's up to you how you customise it yourself but those are little areas to think about before you begin so skills wise so in this pattern it's I wouldn't say it's it's not the easiest pattern if you're a beginner and the accuracy required is immense so that's the first tip accuracy keep all the seam allowances exactly as you should for example these straps while I was sewing them I thought oh, maybe I'll make them a bit wider and then I thought oh no because they won't go in these clips which are really kind of exactly right for the strap width so don't mess with any of the um, instructions stick to the rules um, what I also did though was I used a smaller seam allowance on the waistband here because I tend to prefer a higher waist um, but thinking about it I think it's supposed to sit below the waist if you look here it does sit better on me if I pull them down and then you can see a bit of waist if you pull them up it gets rid of your curve so I think that's better to wear them further down not too low you don't want the crotch hanging too low but the other thing I think it's crying out for is pockets so I'm really desperate to put my hands in pockets when wearing these for some reason so a nice patch pocket would be good here but I'm not sure how you'd incorporate it with this so you could just use an invisible zip down one side because I don't think you need openings at both sides so that's something to think about but it definitely needs a pocket so it might be worth having a bit of a go at a hack if you're confident to do that um, what else was I going to mention oh yeah other skills um, in terms of making this is the amount of top stitching that you need to do there is loads and I mean loads so if you're not an accurate sewer um, then what you could do is make the top stitching thread blue to match your denim and then it's not so obvious when you go wrong I chose a regular polyester thread so I have lots of these cones of thread back from when I used to sew um, cushions and gifts um, for a living so I tend to use this um, it's not the best quality but it's really quite strong and it's obviously good value because I've got loads of it in stock already so I went for a pink and you can see on the front there and um, but really what I wanted to use was a proper jeans top stitching thread now I ordered this from Amazon over a week ago and it's only, it only arrived yesterday so I couldn't use it this is a gold colour so it's the kind of thread that you're familiar with seeing on ready to wear jeans. I love that gold thread that runs through an indigo denim like this. Um, but it wasn't to be, I wanted to get started on this so I just used what I had in and I quite like the pink, I think it looks quite good. I also, I nipped down to John Lewis and I bought some extra strong thread, this can be used for top stitching. 
Now, always test a little sample. So I got some tenon and I threaded up my top stitching thread into my industrial machine and I started sewing and I thought, yay, great, that's brilliant. And then I turned it over and I've got tension problems. And try as I might, my machine didn't like this thread at all. And it's, it's so old, it's from the 1970s. I haven't got all the fancy dials to adjust like on a modern machine. So I thought, I'm gonna leave that. But I did persevere, I had a few goes and it just ended up loopy. I couldn't get it um, to take it at all. So when I've got more time, I'll nail that and have another go or try on my domestic machine. But I do like stitching on the industrial because it's a stronger finish. So I kept it on here instead with the regular thread. So that's it for the review. Um, I really enjoyed making these and that's, why I, I was late yesterday in doing this vlog because I got so carried away and I didn't I didn't want to stop I just carried on and carried on you know when you're getting really into a project and it's that kind of thing and um, but like I say accuracy is the main thing there's a couple of areas that aren't forgiving for example where these bands cross over you've got to be spot on there you've got to have that point of the pocket pointing exactly to the join here and also the pocket placements, um, you've got to get those right. Mine are out by about one or two millimetres, um, but that's okay, I can live with that. It's not too obvious, it's only because I'm being picky. And also, I think when I make these again, I'll make bigger patch pockets on the back. So I have this thing where bigger pockets means smaller bum. <laughs> So um, when buying jeans, and I think it helps. It's like a big tote bag. Um, I do think it helps balance um, things a little. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make bigger pockets. In fact, I might, because this is a bigger pocket. I could just cut out two of these for the back and see how that sits. But I'll need to play around with the placement to make sure it's spot on. Um, so yeah. Oh, also, um, there are buttonholes in this pattern obviously down the side quite a few so I put um, four down each side and um, always test out you probably don't make buttonholes all the time like me so have a test out on a bit of scrap because um, I can never remember which way around my buttonhole um, is sewn so it goes clockwise so do the top bar first then it comes down the right then do the bottom bar and then back up the left and another good tip I discovered is when you're cutting out your buttonhole, if you pop a pin in right at the end there and then pop a seam ripper into the bottom and then when you go up it hits the top there and it won't cut through your actual buttonhole. So that's quite a good tip. I did that with every single one and it worked a treat. I'm sure you know all this already, but it's helpful if you haven't. So there you go, um, lovely pattern. Um, it is really useful. I know lots of people have said, oh, I don't know if I'm too old to wear dungarees. Do, it's fab. And I'll tell you what, this would look great in, in summer, in a lighter denim, as shorts with a bikini underneath. That would look awesome. So. I might just do that for when I go away. One more thing I've not yet done on these, which you've probably noticed if you've made them yourself, is I've not stitched the actual strap. Um, I'll show you what I mean. So the pattern calls for it to be permanently stitched to the, the strap at the top, somewhere back there. I think it'll work quite well there actually, because it'll get hidden. I didn't really want to put a stitch line there. I'm not quite sure how to get round that, and I don't want to, to hand sew it. So I'll have a think about that. But for now, I, I've let it loose because it, it is held in place by the clip. It's not, it doesn't slide around easily. So I might just leave it and just tuck them in. Um, but it's important to make sure that um, you're living with it first. So sitting down and standing up, you don't want them too tight when you're moving around. So I thought I'd, I'd see where I want it first. But it's actually been quite good in this position here. Um, so I might I might attach it just to finish it off because it will poke out the side I think if if not. Um, 
so yeah there's another little bit to finish but that's it so on to denim then as a customer I really struggled to find really good quality denim um, to sew myself and there aren't that many consistent stockists um, here and you tend to have to go all over the place so I thought it'd be quite helpful to show you um, my collection and explain the difference wherever you buy from I think it's helpful if you can just see it up front in front of a camera and see how it behaves so on to the first one so the denim that I'm wearing today is what I've called skinny denim it's a very lightweight denim and um, some people would say that it's probably too light for a pair of dungarees but I really like the softness and the ability to sit down comfortably all day um, so it's perfect for me but it's very lightweight um, and not very forgiving so if you get a hole in it you know it, it would show so um, yeah not as hard wearing as the heavier one so this is it on the roll and there you go on the reverse it's quite nice it has got a polyester content but it doesn't feel you know like when you buy jeggings and they've got the black underneath and it's too much poly um, and it's you know not as comfy this is really soft I'm really funny about jeans I have to have them really soft on the inside so I think I've bought my denim in that same vein so this is a skinny one um, it doesn't give a weight but it's stretchy it's not massively stretchy but it is pretty stretchy for a denim especially on the bias um, and uh, I would say if you had to guess a weight it's probably around the seven ounce weight maybe less even um, so that's always worth remembering I'll show you the difference in another weight so I don't have this in stock at the moment but I'm trying to get some more this is a non stretch denim and this is also classed as indigo but you can see it's different again isn't it this is a really dark kind of blue black indigo now this is much thicker and that would make a really great traditional pair of bootcut jeans where you need less stretch and a little bit more durability this so this is 10 ounces um, and it's all cotton this one there's no stretch in this at all no no spandex no polyester uh, but you just know that's going to wash and wash this would make a fab denim skirt as well because it would hold up to the the jeans buttons and so on you'd still have to interface the bands and so on and um, so you need to, to bear that in mind that the thicker the fabric make sure your um, machine can take it along with a maybe a jeans needle or a strong needle so that's that one um, <coughs> So also this um, skinny denim, by the way, comes in a really gorgeous light blue. So this is stretchy again, really nice to wear for summer. So I can see a pair of these in, in a light denim with a gorgeous kind of gypsy blouse underneath, maybe off the shoulder, um, and that would look great. So do like this for a spring summer wear. So also, you can get denims, printed denims. Now this is classed as a denim. The supplier calls it a denim. I call it a denim on, on the site. But it's more like a chambray. So it feels very much like a cotton. So kind of a, a thick cotton. There's a little bit of stretch to this too. You could probably make this, um, these dungarees in this, even though it's not officially stretchy. I'm not feeling that you need tons of stretching in this pattern although I have made it a bit bigger for myself so um, I guess if you make one that's sized down to fit your actual size then just you'll probably need the stretch um, but yeah so you can get patterns like this this would make you can make a good blouse or a shirt dress or anything from this style and you can get different prints of that same one so it comes in a gorgeous cherry print it's very summery um, and there's also um, uh, swallows, um, a swallow print as well. I'll pop a picture of it up here so you can see that's beautiful um, and that sells really well. And then you can get a distressed denim and this is the softest, gorgeous denim. 
you can see through the holes so you'd have to t a tiny bit have to bear that in mind I don't think it would ruin your modesty um, but yeah this is a gorgeous one this would make a brilliant shift dress so I've got a ready-to-wear shift dress um, that I live in all summer I think it was a Primark one it wasn't expensive but I'd love to recreate it in this because this is a much nicer fabric than my one um, and a short sleeved shift dress maybe with a V and that would look gorgeous a little just a little mini dress easy to throw on great to take away on holiday that type of thing so this is brand new I need to put this on the site this afternoon so it should be on by the time you see this and then this is a seven and a half ounce denim which I think looks really similar to the one I'm wearing but it's a different fabric and it's I don't think there's as much stretch in this one again this would be good for a shirt dress or a shirt a denim shirt would look brilliant um, so most of the denims kind of kicking around at the moment are quite lightweight um, so do keep an eye on that so if you want a traditional pair of denim jeans heavier go for over go for 10 ounces or more I think you can get 15 as well from my supplier but I I didn't choose that one because I think it's quite heavy um, I'll probably need a sample first so yeah that's my selection but have a look around and when you're buying if you're buying on eBay and places like that just double check read as much as you can and find out the weights and the uses and so on and the widths as well um, that will help you choose something for your garment but it's mostly personal choice as well oh I've got one more crazy um, beautiful denim print to show you I forgot to get it I'll go and grab it now how much fun is this so this this is a great fabric this is a little bit I would say handles heavier than the one I'm wearing but it's still it's really stretchy this one so if you wanted to make a pair of skinny jeggings or um, uh, it would look brilliant as um, a millet, millet dungarees and you could dress it up with contrasting buttons and so on this would be fab I tell you what this would make um, a really nice fitted pencil skirt as well so you can do all sorts with denim oh and another tip which um, occurred to me a few weeks ago and a lady was talking to me about this the other day if you're wanting to try sewing jeans and you're a little bit scared of plunging into a jeans pattern and all the different pockets and buttons and flies and so on how about choosing a slim trouser pattern and then just sewing it in a lightweight stretch denim like this so I've got a, a pair of birder trousers and it's it's a beautiful pattern they're really simple they're three-quarter length with an invisible zip up the side I made them in a, a really wild floral cotton print but if I want a pair of quick denim jeans they'd be the ones I'd whiz up and um, I'll pop a link to the color of the sorry to the actual pattern front so you can see I can't remember the number of the pattern but it's by Berda and they look probably similar to sew over its ultimate trousers perhaps um, I've, I've not sewn though so I don't know but they're a really simple trouser pattern but sewn in a denim they'd be great I hope that's helped so uh, next week I'm going to talk about fabric storage not my fabric storage um, but fabric stash storage so it'll be a good chance for me to get my stash tidy ready to show you and I've got a couple of techniques to help you store yours so that it, you actually want to admire your collection and make it easier for you to select your fabrics so I will see you next Wednesday and have a lovely week thank you very much for watching give me a like if you've enjoyed this and don't forget to subscribe you take care bye for now Thank mm -hmm. you.